All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today I'm going to do a complete walkthrough of the new EA Play app to show you where everything is and how all of it works as Origin gets shut down sometime near the end of this year, 2022. So this is going to be the new launcher for all things in and around EA and EA Play. And on the main page, you can see that they have some stuff that they want to show me that is on sale, like all of the top games that are currently being advertised. Um, Sims 4 just went free to play, and then you can get like their EA Play program that you pay for, kind of like the Game Pass, in order to get access to all of these different games. And then over here, you can go to the store page by going shop the sale, or it'll show you more information about their various EA Play memberships and how much that they cost and what you get for being a part of it. But for the most part, this is your layout. You've got your library of games on the left. You have your friends list on the right, so on and so forth. If you'd like to purchase a game, you can go to the browse section. And this is where you can see a collection that's sortable from these little pull down menus at the top of the screen where you can say, like, I want to check out a first person game or a horror game or a puzzle game, and then it will sort those accordingly. And then you can find one that looks interesting, like Curse of the Dead Gods. And then you can get some more information about that game, how much it costs, system requirements, and all of that good stuff. And then you can purchase it. And then once you've purchased those games, you'll find them inside of your library where you can find them, click the download button, and then choose a location that you would like to install them. Then once you select a game for installation, it'll pop up in the sidebar as being playable. Currently, it's showing that it's downloading Dead Space 3. And then if you want, there's even like a section here where it shows you all of the currently downloading games where you can pause them or you can even cancel them by hitting out the X button. And that, for the most part, in a nutshell, is each one of these different games. You can even click on the individual game that you own. And even though this should have been updated with the origin, because I have played this in the last couple of years, if this game has not been played on the new EA Play app, it does not track the last played date, although it will tell you the total amount of time that you have played in each one of those games. On the game page itself, it'll tell you what kind of add-on stuff that you can purchase for it, because there's a bunch of skins and other stuff that you can buy for all kinds of games. Then the last thing I'll show you is on the main homepage, just because I can. Um, the friends list is pretty straightforward. At the top, you've got your profile where you can set your availability status online, away, invisible. You can check out your profile. You can click on take a tour of the app or you can look at your various settings for your profile on the EA Play app itself. Like here I can change my profile icon, I can manage my membership by logging into the website, it'll show me anybody that I have blocked on this platform, and then you can also connect your accounts like Discord down there at the bottom. Over here you have various application settings, like automatic updates, in-game overlay, which I think, well, I could leave that turned on, Accessibility, enable autoplay, download settings, get updates automatically. Where do you want to download stuff to? Tracking of my playtime. This will allow you to set it up so that it'll keep an eye on how much you play. Although currently this is bugged out and actually not like showing that. Oh, there it goes. You can enable playtime tracking so that you can kind of keep an eye on how much you play. And if you think you're playing too much, you can stop. Similarly, you can also set up a family account system so that if you have kids, you can limit how much time they're allowed to play each day, when they can play, and all of that good stuff by adding a teen account. Although people, your kids have to be at least a teenager in order to officially use this program. At least that's what it looks like. So beyond that, we can also go to my profile, which is just a pop-up window. From here, you can edit various information, like I can give myself a different screen name, different little nickname. Let me bring that back up. You can also see what games I play, and also what friends I have on my friends list. Most of this is like a pop-up system, like if I go to my buddy Artron, 
it'll show me his profile if I like hover over all of the friends he's got. In this case, it just shows mutual friends. If I click on him, it won't take me to his profile. It'll open up a private text message. But instead, if I hover over and click view profile, it'll similarly show me his friends list and then a running list of all of his friends, including at the top, the friends that we have in common. I wonder why it shows these weird janky numbers at the top of some people's names. That's really weird. Um, if I want to remove him as a friend, all I have to do is click on the check mark that says friends and it gives me the option to remove friend. The three little dots allow me to block and report him. And otherwise I can see what games he owns and also a running list of all of his different friends. And I can hover over this button and add them if I see someone that I know that I want to add to my friends list as well. And then over here, if you want to, you can also manually add a friend by searching them inside of this system. Although currently I don't have anyone that I want to search. You can also attach your Steam account, your Xbox account, or your PlayStation account in order to find friends that way that might have their account also enabled for cross-play compatibility. Or just, you know, using their account in multiple places. And so that's pretty much it. Um, the other stuff over here is you can go to the main like application settings in the upper left hand corner with these three little slash marks. It kind of functions like a web browser where you can go forward, back, actual size, zoom in. There's a help section where you can visit the answers HQ on their website. You can report an error. You can resap, start the app, or you can put the app into recovery mode or it will try to repair itself if and when it encounters some sort of bug that looks like it broke the whole thing. You can also go to the About section where it'll take you to an area where you can go to the Contact Us page. You can get the Great Games Guarantee, which I believe is their return policy, online safety guidelines, and their various social media links. And also, if you need to report a bug, it has the app version that you are currently using here at the top. Something else that's kind of interesting is there's actually a roadmap that they show you where it'll take you to another website and tell you what they're currently actively working on for the development of this app. That's kind of interesting considering they kind of added and removed or broke things in origin without much say or uh, announcement as to the fact that they're going to break something and make a game unplayable for a while or many games. So that's kind of interesting to see. You can also go into offline mode where you're app is not currently communicating with the internet, sort of like going into Steam's offline mode. Some games will still function, some games won't, same idea. Here you can sign out to change uh, users and then you can exit the program entirely. And then there's also a feedback survey if you want to give them a piece of your mind. So that's it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. This has been a complete walkthrough of all the different sections and settings for the EA Play app. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop those in the comment section below. I'm not the foremost expert on this app. I just started using it like a month ago, but I will try to help when I can. So that's it for this one. Have a good one, everybody. Do the likey subscribe thing, and I will catch you next time. And also, we have a Discord if you want to come in and get help that way. Or just hang out and chat with everybody. So bye, everyone, and have a good one.